Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. Uh, or if you're watching on YouTube, there's a subscription link here underneath the video. Uh, please do subscribe and help support the show. And with that, let's go ahead and get into some of the cool stuff that we've found for this episode. Starting off over at Tom's Guide at uh, tomsguide.com, uh, there's a, a, we have a, an update on the heart bleed, heart bleed bug. Uh, there's now an app and browser plugin check for the heart bleed, heart bleed bug. Boy, I have the worst time saying that. <laughs> Most major websites have patched the gaping security hole called the heart bleed, heart bleed bug, which at one point affected up to two thirds of the internet. However, there are still some stragglers. A new free browser plugin and Android app from cloud security company Trend Micro can help check that the sites you visit and Android apps you download are heart bleed free. So uh, the bug, as we've already previously reported, exists in an, a version of OpenSSL. It's used to encrypt data in transit between your computer and a server uh, as part of the HTTPS or SSH type connections. Um, the browser plugin from Trend Micro and application can help users feel a bit more secure on the internet. Definitely uh, give it a check if you have not already done so. Um, excuse me. It's it's uh, one of those uh, things that could be immensely useful. So the next story that uh, we have, I'm including this because it's it's useful for me. But I figured you know there could other, be other users out there find it useful as well. Uh, from PCMag.com, get alerts from Google Trends in your inbox. If you're the kind of person who likes having breaking news at your fingertips, but can't always check the various news apps that litter your mobile device or tablet, Google has a new solution for you. Google Trends, the helpful service that allows Google fans to see just what people are searching for on a daily or monthly basis, is now throwing email notifications into the mix. So you can subscribe to Google Trends to receive emails about what people are most interested in searching for on Google within any particular country, which Google separates into three buckets, hottest content, hotter content, and hot content. So if you're a news junkie, you can receive as it happens emails whenever new topics grace Google's hot searches list, per which hot bucket you expressed interest in. So pretty cool. Uh, for me, this is useful for doing the various shows that I'm involved in. Um, what can I say? I, I need to know what's happening so I can talk to you about what's happening. From MorningNewsUSA.com, Flickr launches a new application uh, redesign for iOS and Android. Uh, Flickr is one of my favorite photo uh, sharing websites out there, most favorite photo sharing website for a little more serious type photography. Uh, Instagram is my kind of, you know, snapshot type thing. Anyway, uh, Yahoo has just announced and released a major update and redesign of their Flickr mobile apps for both iOS and Android. The company is calling the release Flickr 3.0, and it brings with it an almost completely redesigned interface and a slew of new and updated features. So definitely uh, pretty cool. I'll be checking this out on my various devices just to see what it looks like. From uh, thestar.com.my otherwise known as the star doc online uh, meet Kepler 186 F the first exoplanet found to be almost like earth. And I'm using air quotes here. Uh, pretty interesting for the first time. Scientists have found an earth sized world. They've named Kepler 186 F orbiting a life friendly zone around a distant star called Kepler 186. Pretty interesting. The discovery announced on Thursday is the closest scientists have come so far to finding a true Earth twin. The star is located about 500 light years away in the constellation Cygnus, and it's smaller, uh, is smaller and redder than the sun. 
The star's outermost planet, designated Kepler-186f, receives about one-third of the radiation from its parent star as Earth gets from the Sun, meaning that high noon on this world could be roughly akin to Earth an hour before sunset. So, uh, not quite exactly like Earth, but similar. Uh, Size-wise, they are also similarly sized, so pretty interesting. Um, the planet is the right distance from its host star for water, if any exists, to be liquid on the surface, a condition that scientists suspect is necessary for life. Obviously, water is the elixir of life. Um, life has never been found where water did not exist to date, so pretty interesting. We'll be keeping an eye on this to see uh, any further developments. From news.discovery.com, the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket defies the bleak weather and flies. Pretty interesting. Um, the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket blasted off from Cape Canaveral Air Force uh, Station Friday to send a Dragon cargo capsule on its way to the International Space Station. We previously reported that this had been delayed and they weren't sure if they were going to launch or not. Well, apparently they have decided to launch. The rocket flight was perfect as far as we could tell. Chief uh, SpaceX Chief Executive Elon Musk told reporters after launch. So, uh, pretty cool. Uh, the cargo was about 5,000 pounds of science gear and supplies for the space, space station crew. It's due to arrive at the space station on Sunday. So, pretty neat. From uh, the Christian Science Monitor over at csmonitor.com, the Moon Orbiter Lady, L-A-D-E-E, -E, crashed triumphantly after an amazing mission. So uh, pretty interesting. Lady did not go gentle into to that good night. The vending machine-sized orbiter ended its triumphant mission to the moon by smashing into the lunar surface during a deliberately planned high-risk maneuver sometime between 9.30 and 10.22 p.m. On Thursday, April 17th, NASA officials have confirmed. Uh, we were less than a kilometer above the surface. Um, no spacecraft has ever done that before. When it crashed into a crater wall, Lady was traveling at a speed of 3,600 miles per hour, about three times the speed of a high-powered rifle bullet. There's uh, nothing gentle about impact at these speeds. It's just a question of whether Lady made a localized craterlet on a hillside or scattered debris across a flat area. So I guess we'll find out soon enough. Pretty interesting, though, to say the least. Uh, from catholic.org, over at Catholic Online, eyes to the heavens, astronomers say there may be a new Saturn moon. That's right. If confirmed, a heavenly body would become the 63rd moon in Saturn's orbit. The, this has been uh, circulating around the internets. There's a, uh, a bright spot in one of the rings going around Saturn that they think is a moon. And um, if it is, in fact, a moon, if, if we can somehow uh, validate that it is, in fact, a moon, it will be the 63rd moon. So pretty cool. Um, they've named it Peggy so far. They first noted a black and white image of the outermost ring captured by, by the Cassini spacecraft that was a little bright spot and um, should be pretty interesting to see how that develops uh, over time. From uh, 3HD WSAV on your side over at WSAV.com, Earth Day 2014. Did you know that Earth Day is actually apparently upon us? Uh, as uh, Savannah, Georgia prepares to celebrate Earth Day on Saturday. That's right, Saturday. Tomorrow, April 19th. Saturday. A newly released UN, is it April 19th? I'd have to double check. Anyway, I haven't really been paying attention, which is kind of pathetic. But anyway, let's get back to the story. A newly released UN report is calling for urgent action to slow the threat of climate change. Top scientists and experts who compiled the special report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, said earlier that it is virtually certain that global temperatures will continue to increase in this century, resulting in longer heat waves, rising sea levels, and stronger tropical cyclones. The lead author of the study says that time is of the essence if disaster is to be averted. 
If we wait for more than about 10 or 15 years, we really make it extremely difficult to keep climate from changing substantially and really exposing ourselves to some substantial harms, says Dr. Leon Clark. So the unfortunate reality is in my lifetime, I will probably see really bad things happen. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, given our history as humankind, I, I have little faith that, uh, or even little hope that, um, that, you know, things will happen unless it is profitable uh, for the corporations that control much of the economy to make climate change a priority, which at this point, it really isn't. So it should be pretty interesting to see how things play out over the next 15, 20, 30 years. Anyway. That will do it for this edition of The Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.